son of his 27th year coming home. The face is familiar, and the song is too, but the tuxedo. This very formal occasion for John Denver kicks off the sixth season of the PBS series in performance at the White House. John hosted the first program in the series for President and Mrs. Bush, and John Denver is in Nashville, where, is, where he's recording a new album, and he joins us this morning from station WKRN. John, good morning. Good morning to you, John. All right, the big White House performance. This series, though, started, I think, under President Carter. A lot of classical things of Vladimir Horowitz. Then under President Reagan, there are a lot of Broadway kind of things, like Marvin Hamlish with all those tunes. What's the focus now with, the, with President Bush? Well, I think it's more a cross-section of American popular music, and uh, we had uh, opera singer Simon Estes uh, from Broadway, Judy Kay. We had Joshua Rifkin on the show playing Scott Joplin Rags, which was just wonderful, and I sang a couple of my own songs. I hear that while you were taping this, you did get a chance to go out and throw a few horseshoes with the president. Is that true? Well, I, uh, I did challenge the president, and uh, he could not resist. We didn't actually get to play a whole game, just uh, tossed a couple of shoes. So what did you talk about? We talked uh, about China and about the environment, actually. He had just done uh, some wonderful work for, uh, for clean air and is starting to uh, live up to uh, many of the things he said he was going to do in regard to the environment. And I was especially happy about that. And then uh, he had to do with my uh, first opportunity to go to China, and so we discussed that a little bit. We've got a shot of you again in the tuxedo, but you're wearing a medal, and we all want to know what the medal is. That's my NASA Public Service Medal. Thank you for asking. All right. You've, you've had a long, long-term interest in space and space travel, and I read somewhere where you were going to pay the Russians $10 million to go up. Well, I... I excuse me, is go it ahead. Is, was that true, and how did it come about? And well, uh, so you're right. First of all, I've had a long-term interest in, uh, in space. Uh, I was involved in getting the whole citizen space program started in this country. I uh, had been assured that I was going to fly, and then we had, of course, this terrible tragedy with a Challenger. And uh, uh, private citizens flying in space is probably still some time off. Uh, during that time, I've had a building relationship on many levels with the Soviet Union. And uh, out of their uh, awareness of my interest, they invited me to fly in space. And had a, I actually had a flight scheduled this coming December. Uh, initially, they did put a price tag on it of t $10 million. That's what they put on it, not what I offered them. And, uh, but I, had, I was about a meeting away, I think, from having that uh, price uh, just uh, put, put out of the picture. I guess the price we should point out, too, is for a year's worth of training at their space center and teaching you Russian and all these things. But you and your wife were actually studying Russian, weren't you? We, were, uh, we had all the tapes that began studying Russian. We had some uh, work opportunities set up for Cassie over there in, in, in film. And uh, we, we were going to go for it. That's right. And I think what stopped it was the little baby, right? Cassie became pregnant, uh, yeah. a real miracle in our life, and uh, uh, we have a little baby girl, Jessie Bell, who is seven weeks old tomorrow. And is Jessie Bell there in Nashville with you as you're recording? She is in Nashville, but she, this is the first time since she's been alive that I've gotten up before she has. <laughs> has how has the baby changed your life now? Well, I, I think for me, it really caused me to, uh, to take a step back and look at uh, you know, all the things I was involved in in my life and really uh, make a commitment to have it a little bit more in balance. Uh, I had the next five years practically mapped out with the Soviet space flight, uh, the possibility of that. And uh, for the first time in over 10 years, I've been home in April and May in the Rocky Mountains, my favorite time of the year. And uh, I feel like I've gotten off this treadmill that I'd been on and uh, have my life a little bit more under control. So you're there, you're doing this uh, album. Are you going to have any songs on there especially for Jesse? There are a couple of songs written special for Jesse, yes. Any kind of little lyrics you could kind of give us a little sneak preview? But there's one song called The Gift You Are, like the very first breath of spring. The gift you are, all the joy that love can bring. The gift you are, all of our dreams come true. The gift you are, the gift of you. All your dreams come true. Your career has had a lot of Rocky Mountain highs, if you will, and some lows. How have you managed through that, and what do you want to pass on to Jesse on that, on that note? Well, I think it's to keep it all in perspective. You know, it's been a, a, I've been very fortunate, I think, to live in Aspen, Colorado, uh, as opposed to uh, Hollywood or New York City. I think it's helped me keep my head a little bit more squarely on my shoulders. I hope so, anyway. I uh, have had uh, uh, wonderful success and great luck in my career. I've been able to travel all over the world, and, and out of that, I really know that people are the same everywhere, that we have the same aspirations, the same desires for our own lives, for those of our children. 
and I would like to impart uh, some of that sense of global community, global family, if you will, to uh, little mm. Jesse. All good lessons. John, we'll watch not only for the special, but also for that new album, what, August, September, so due out? Er early September. Early September. We'll watch for that, too. Good to see you again. Thanks very much, Joan. And Tonight, Barry Boswick, Simon Estes, Judy Kay, Joshua Rifkin, and the United States Marine Band. Join your host, John Denver, for an Independence Day celebration in performance at the White House. Let's join the President and Mrs. Bush in the East Room. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Denver. Mr. President, Mrs. Bush, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, thank you very much. Today, in performance at the White House, begins a, a new season with a new first family. And we, we welcome you all. As we celebrate our nation's freedom, we turn, as always, to music. Our music director today is Mr. Dick Hyman. <laughs> what a special place to celebrate. You know, there's always been music in the chief executive's house right from the very beginning, which means even before there was a White House. George Washington sponsored lots of concerts. Uh, he danced expertly. Uh, he would have loved this, but he never lived here. It hadn't been finished yet. The White House is a democratic place. Uh, that's with a small D, sir. <laughs> I think this must be the only country in the world where the chief lives in a house, lives and works in a house that is continuously open to the public. And I think that's pretty far out. Our, it is our house, you see. It's a symbol for the whole country. And from time to time, uh, our songwriters have reminded us that we are one big family, that that is the source of our strength. Here to give us a stirring example of that spirit is Mr. Simon Estes, the internationally known opera star. Uh, Mr. Estes is no stranger to the White House. He's performed here before, as well as at the inaugural concert uh, at the Kennedy Center, uh, the United Nations 25th anniversary, and the opening of the Olympic Games, and uh, we were together at the Statue of Liberty Centennial. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Simon Estes. <laughs> 